educating people at least on what is IT. And what I like that your president constantly say IT is important. And I was, you know, I was traveling to Samarkand uh, and the driver said, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know what exactly I'm going to do, but I know that uh, IT is cool and would like to be a developer. It's necessary is that all of people which are listening to us, for example, uh, they start thinking, how could I contribute? And uh, stop competing with each other and start collaborating with each other. Yeah, it's very important. I believe yeah, a lot of young people in Uzbekistan could employ the strategy and get, get their f- first thousand dollars a month uh, on this business. And they can even start it while they're working on studying because you need like 10, 10 hours a week, for example, uh, 15 hours a week to start. And like they will bring you like $200, $300, $500 a month. And like on the course of a year, it could be uh, bring you a couple of thousand dollars a month. What is the way that you and me, we meet somewhere? Mm-hmm. What is the best the case? Be- the, the best way, the best way for Avla Shop, and it, it's actually how it uh, happened in your case. I just uh, knew a few people in Uzbekistan and asked, are there any good startups? And they said, you definitely need to talk to our group. Assalamu alaikum, dostlar. I'm Rod Sadiq. Sizlar bilan yana bir bor ko'rishganimdan juda-juda xursandman. Bugun biroz nood ati, noananaviy usulda suhbatlashamiz, ya'ni bu suhbatimiz ingliz tilida bo'ladi. Mehmonimiz xalqaro ekspert bo'lganliklari uchun hozirdan boshlab ingliz tilida davom ettiramiz. So, hello everyone, Murad Sodiq. Uh, we start uh, Avlo podcast and today our guest uh, Mr. Denis Kalishkin. Denis is a uh, investment director at I2BF Global Venture and he's also founder of Ask VC. And Denis area in technology in in many areas uh, for example uh, augmented reality iot health tech robotic process automation and um, virtual reality space tech is is today we will talk also about that uh, about this whole topic yeah so Denis, welcome to our podcast yeah thanks for having me today thank you very much i'm very uh, actually I met you a few minutes ago, yeah, but um, talking to you with first words, first sentences, I believe that how bright you are in terms of technology, how bright you are in terms of idea generation, and also not idea generation, it's about implementing that idea in a specific way, right? So it was very, very kind of, um, kind of, bumped to on my on my mind that how come these simple ideas can be implemented in a normal in a simple way yeah so this is uh, a lot of um, the insights i have got already thank you very much a so pleasure. dennis um our format is usually we start with introduction but um, i already uh, seen a lot of um, materials a lot of videos about you in um, in the uzbek community on youtube and everywhere so that's why let's have a short introduction mm-hmm. and then we will come to the concrete questions yeah please yeah uh, i wouldn't uh, repeat everything in my introduction so i'll i'll tell a little bit uh, of my background which which is not there yet super so first of all you need to understand uh, you need to know that i'm uh, i'm from a very small town so it's uh, like 18000 pe- uh, 80000 80, people uh, it's on the south uh, south uh, west of russia And um, when I was a kid uh, and started uh, at uh, school, I haven't had no idea what I will be doing in my life. What I what I knew is uh, is that I want to earn money using brains. And why is that? Uh, because when I was 13, 12, 13, 15 years old, I spent a lot of time in the village, uh, and we were growing foods and uh, you know wor- working heavily actually. So this is why I decided that I will uh, use my intellect uh, to earn money. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this what, you know, pushed me forward uh, and 
the and when I um, uh, when I uh, uh, studied at Moscow University, uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. I also didn't know what I would do in my life. Uh, I just started hard uh, and, you know, started hard to be a rocket scientist. Uh, back then, I understood that I wouldn't implement this. Uh, I wouldn't work in this space. But I was uh, thinking, how can I use uh, the knowledge and technology, you know, to build a solid business model, something which will, uh, self -fund, uh, will be self-funded and help people? change in the world. So in 2009, I, uh, I heard first, first, for the first in my life, I've heard about venture capital and startups. So it wasn't all, all around here. And uh, this is the time I understood, yeah, this is the word I what was in my head, but I just didn't know it. So this is the passion um, uh, I had. And uh, actually, why one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast and uh, many other podcasts and uh, and uh, you know events uh, which will be coming this year in Uzbekistan is just to make uh, more people to hear the words uh, venture capital startup why it's important, and one or two percent of uh, those people who will hear uh will uh, understand like me many years ago that this is what i would like to do in my life so to get like uh, to get uh, like 10000 people working on working on startup idea at least it means that at least 1 million people to need to hear yeah. to hear those yeah. words yeah. so this is what i'm working together with the, the ecosystem on right now in, in the ecosystem uh, in in uzbekistan Excellent, excellent. You mentioned 2009 you first hear about VC in, yeah. in Russia. Yeah. Is it, it, can we understand that in Russia even started these startup ecosystems from that time? Uh, yeah, I'll give you historical um, his, historical aspect. Uh, the first startup started to emerge in early 90s. In, in late 90s, maybe 1995, 1997. In Russia. In Russia. And uh, uh, it was, uh, it they were, f were sponsored by uh, EBRD and other organizations. There were not that many funds there back then. In 2007, uh, there was a fund of funds, a Russian venture company, and uh, there were some some uh, some ecosystem just emerging. In 2008. Um, the first uh, fund, uh, government fund, was established, Rusnana, and they started in 2008. They, they started to hire people from my university. Like they hired like 60 people or 80 people, something like that. I remember those uh, when they were like there was a you know immense talks about uh, about nanotechnology and how uh, you know. Those, VC, those, those VCs were coming to scientists and saying, hey, we need another technology and uh, other technologies which were, were we, we didn't name the, them nanotechnology. Now they took those technologies and say, this is nanotechnology and they invest in nanotechnology. And um, in 2009, there were a few startups um, there were a few events. For example, um, there was an event in our university, Imagine Cup from, by Microsoft. Which uh, which was actually <clears throat> uh, you know to today event uh, to inspire the, to like kind of a hackathon but working on ideas yeah yeah but there was not that many funds it was not uh, that widely spread and in two thousand only in two thousand eleven uh, they launched Skolkova and uh, and back then I was already working in this, in, in a fund. And there were very few of them. So uh, m it was, I believe, more or less the same or similar what you're having in Uzbekistan right now. Uh -huh. So very few people even heard of those words. But I was lucky because I worked in, um, I studied at, uh, I had another sec second education, uh, higher school of economics. And we had a, a four month course on venture capital. Just was just part of the curriculum and uh, uh, and out of all courses it was my favorite and I was you know, maybe the only in the group 
who was extremely passionate about this topic and I was starting it like the, it was my my favorite lesson yeah, yeah. Of, the, of the week. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So as you see, um, maybe Russia started 10 years ago this kind of initiation in, in startup and you already passed this long way mm-hmm. uh, from 2010 until now, right? And how do you see, as far as you are in Uzbekistan talking to many startups, many companies, many entrepreneurs, many organizations, maybe the government, right? Mm-hmm. At this moment, last six months, you are in Uzbekistan, right? So how, honestly, how do you see startup ecosystem in Uzbekistan? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, first, I'll add that, uh, except from Russia, I also, uh, you know, have some understanding of other uh, ecosystems. For example, I worked for eight years with Kazakhstan and I, I've seen how they developed. Uh, the last uh, six months, I also, uh, uh, we also work closely with Armenia. Uh, for 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 a few for for quite a few years, and we have uh, we actually have a unicorn uh, with a nine billion dollar valuation, uh, and the founder is Armenian. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a three hundred three hundred R and D team uh, in in Yerevan. Uh, and uh, I also traveled across the world uh, in Europe as well is in Asia, for example, in um, Korea, South Korea, uh, in Dubai. And uh, I have like a lot cont- a lot of countries to compare with. And uh, the last six months, I also visited uh, a few countries, uh, for example, uh, Azerbaijan, um, Kazakhstan. Uh, I talked to, uh, f- to guys from Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan and uh, Georgia. So uh, first of all, uh, you're not lagging behind uh, compared to to your uh, to your new peers neighbors. Uh, neighbors they're not that far ahead first of all uh, the, the other i see that uh, it park and some ecosystem players they they did a pretty good job of uh, educating people at least on what is it and what i like that your president constantly say it is important and i was you know i was traveling to samarkand uh, and the driver said, I, I, "I don't know. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do, but I know that uh, IT is cool and would like to be a developer." So this is uh, this is uh, what I like about uh, uh, about Uz- uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, you just need to, to make the next step: is uh, how to build businesses on that, and we will be talking about that, and how to build international businesses on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of startups, uh, you are very early in this journey. Okay. So most of the startups are pre-seed startups. And uh, most of the startups, this is one of the big problem, but it's solvable one, is that uh, you are focused on the local market. And uh, unfortunately, um, the local market size in most of the industries is very very tiny for example we talk uh, uh, one guy uh, uh, reached out to me and said i would like to raise money and we made uh, an, an extensive research uh, on the market both in the tashkent and uh, in uzbekistan and uh, you know nearby countries and we understood that like, his uh, annual market is five million dollars five million dollars is not what uh, you could build a solid business on so I said, if you want to raise money, any money, uh, you need to expand to other countries, not necessarily to the United States. You can expand to Latin America, MENA, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, other countries, India, Pakistan. Just pick a big country, a big country with a big population. Uh, find uh, uh, the one where you know, a lot of factors uh, are in favor of yours and, and start doing it. And so a lot of startups are at pre-seed stage and a lot of them are still thinking about uh, solving some local problems. Uh, so one of the things you need to to start doing is... Uh, being doing, international. Being international, starting uh, selling abroad. And we're, we're having you know this conversation in English, right? So yeah. a lot of young people in Uzbekistan speak English. Yeah. This is one, uh, one plus. So you, you, you already um, have less problems than, for example, Russian founders, a lot of them don't speak English. Yeah. This is the natural barrier for them. They're, like, uh, they're learning English 
right now yeah. just because they need to relocate. You already have this. Um, yeah, so, uh, and the, the other the, the other question, uh, the other problem I see is uh, because of uh, you typically don't participate in international events, uh, you don't feel the extreme competition you're, you're working in, a competitive environment. So, you know, you need, at least, for example, in June, uh, we had uh, a Central, uh, Central Asian uh, Venture Forum in uh, Almaty. And even there, uh, there was like more, you know, more competition, uh, more people, international people coming there. Uh, and uh, those, uh, those people from Uzbekistan, startups from Uzbekistan who traveled there, they, they, they saw the more competition. So, at least if there is a chance like that, 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 that there is a opportunity to travel to some countries for example at least visit dubai a uh, specific startup event or you know uh, germany france uh, there is a big event in uh, lisbon uh, it's called web summit in november mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like 8000 people eight, no 18 80 80000 people participating uh, so um, yeah yeah um, you know very interesting is, um, do you think this startup ecosystem um, that is coming to the actively mood, it depends on the, do you think it's a politics here or it depends on the economies, economics, developed economics, etc. Or, or technology is there. Uh, how do you, how, how do you make dynamics of this startup ecosystem um, faster yes faster w okay. what is that impact you know um you know i like uh, i like uh, the phrase that anyone could be an ecosystem builder if they care enough so it was uh, I, I took it from uh, one conversation at seed stars uh, and uh, first of all you need uh, you know quite a few passionate people about it Join their forces uh, to to move this forward, uh, and uh, I'm not saying that you you don't need funding, you don't need uh, uh, government support, and this ecosystem uh, building companies. Uh, and I believe that IT Park is doing a great job. For example, there are a few a few um, um, uh, a few other players. Uh, for example, I, I give lectures at Ground Zero, um, at Impact, and, uh, yeah, and yeah. other places. Uh, there are many people which are active, and this is uh, you know thanks to those people, the ecosystem is moving forward. Yeah. Uh, but um, the first thing I believe uh, uh, is necessary is that all of people which are listening to us, for example, uh, they start thinking, how could I contribute? and uh, stop competing with each other and start collaborating with each other. Yeah, it's a very important. Very important because one of the mindsets uh, of people from the former Soviet Union is, I have the idea, I have secret knowledge, I wouldn't share it. Yeah. But uh, the reality is that to build a big business, you, you know, idea means not that much. Yeah. You need, uh, you know, strain your forces and uh, build, uh, you know, uh, build a positive ecological environment around you, hire people, inspire people, uh, you know, do a lot. Yeah? And uh, oftentimes money is not the limiting factor, you know, uh, and you can do more with 10 times less funding. But if you have the proper access to proper people, if you have the proper ideas, you have uh, people supporting you, so, um, so first, uh, the first thing I would like to, you know, bring in, in, in here is that um, each and every one try to, to think how you can contribute. For example, uh, last week I've built a small community of volunteers, which will be helping out me, you know, uh, spreading information in the student communities and across uh, technology entrepreneurs. Uh, and. Mm, yeah, we shall we shall see we, we, well where it will be headed uh, into. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, make research in uh, legal frame 
uh, here. There are some limitations, and I know people uh, from the government are working on, uh, you know, solving those problems. So I believe this is coming, and uh, I'm really grateful for the work they are doing on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, it's not at the moment. It's not the limiting factor. I believe. It's, it must be done uh, for people to be, you know, co- incorporating uh, companies here rather than incorporating them in other geographies. Uh, it, it will uh, help out, you know, uh, investors uh, feel more uh, positive about investing in local companies. But uh, it's not the limiting factor mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. The limiting factor is inspiration. Uh, the limiting factor is, uh, you know, you know, the number of people even thinking about it because a lot of people are even don't dream about it maybe even didn't hear about it yeah. about uh, startups about uh, IT how startup is different from IT outsourcing company for example yeah then is sorry to cut off here that a lot of uh, people may not understand what project or product we can say is a startup we, what are uh, normal products or projects? How we do um, categorize them? How we know them? Mm-hmm. So uh, the main uh, differentiation is uh, the, the 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 growth, the growth, uh, mm-hmm. and the, the size of the business it could reach in five to ten years. So venture capitalists uh, would like to invest in startups and companies which can have a valuation a billion dollar valuation in like five years or 10 years from now. Uh, And um, why is that? Uh, Because uh, they, uh, like a lot of uh, start, uh, a lot of companies they invest in, they fail. Just like half of them, for example. They fail. They go go, go bankrupt. And uh, you need to understand that if you start a startup, that uh, like, for example, if you have an idea right now, there is 99% uh, percent chance that you will fail, mm. 99%. Mm. But you can do certain stuff to make it uh, first this chance like 95%, then 90, then 80. And like uh, year after year, you're moving towards um, uh, when you, you have a chance, like a 100% chance that you're succeeding. Um, so the first thing uh, you need uh, to understand when you're dealing with startups, you're dealing with immense risk of failure. And that's that's okay. VCs are okay with it. They understand that it's part of the game, because uh, the on the bright side, if there is a big chance to fail, there is a big chance for upside, so 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 that you can earn much. And I'll give you the example. An example: there is a company uh, Miro uh, out yes. of Russia. So they have seventeen or nineteen billion dollar valuation right now. And uh, when I first saw them, they had like. $7 million valuation. So the business angels who invested $50,000 or, or $100,000, they like, earned, for example, $100 million on that. Um, so this is, uh, this is a very asymmetrical business. So uh, the, first, uh, the first criteria, what is startup, what is not, is if it could be, it, it could um, have a valuation of a billion dollar or more. Natural uh, criteria here comes is that the size of the market uh, the startup is operating is should both also be around one billion dollar mm-hmm. a year. So, and this is the reason I say that you need to start to, to build international uh, international companies because uh, there are no markets in um, in Uzbekistan. Maybe very it's very, very small few, market. Very yeah, small. where where you can have a billion dollar market. Yeah. Even if you collect all the region like Kazakhstan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan and uh, Tajikistan and uh, some other countries, yeah. Yeah. you need to attack you know markets at least with uh, two hundred million population, for example. Yeah. Um, and um, the other criteria is that this revenue should ro- grow fast. So you need to at least double or triple your revenue for like five years or more. And uh, in five years or six years, you need to reach a revenue of 100, 100 million dollars. So, uh, and this is a, this is impossible if you're ju- doing just uh, you know IT outsourcing company, for example. Uh, not impossible, but close close to impossible because uh, I, mm, IT outsourcing, for example, 
is the business where you need to, like you hire more people, you do more projects, you hire more people, you do more projects. And this is a good business. And this is a good business for a lot of us, especially young people to start uh, because the, uh, this is how you acquire expertise and even see the ideas for startups. But startups are typically about doing something new, not maybe not new in, in the whole world, but new in some uh, part of the world. And uh, if you talk about, for example, Russian market, when they it developed on the early, early days of it, a venture uh, startup market, they started from uh, making copycats. So they, they, saw, they looked at the ideas in, in the United States copied them uh, and uh, implemented it onto, into the other geography. Yeah. And there are still a lot of markets with a big population where can you implement it. So you see, for example, in, in Europe or lately in China, um, uh, and you can implement something in Africa, mm. in Latin America, mm. in uh, a big Asian countries, for example, Indonesia is a big one. Um, and, uh, you know, implement this and uh, build a big, big, big business. And later on, uh, as uh, soon as like product expertise in the in the country will grow, will be having more um, examples of uh, good companies. You will start doing something more sophisticated. Yeah, but but there is many people think that our oh, startup is you know the big thing. I need to know that and that. I have. I need to have money at least 100k 200k so there's many many young people has idea right but they don't have um, let's say budget at the beginning and this is a typical scenario for young people but they have a passion you mm -hmm. know they have a motivation to do that so let's let's talk about the journey for those who doesn't have money mm -hmm. who are age like you know after school or like uh, 10th or 11th grade of the school and they, they are thinking about okay what shall i do in life etc etc so what is the journey there what mm -hmm. to, what to start can yeah. you can they start thinking about startup with zero budget yeah uh so uh first of all uh, you need to know uh that big startups typically uh, are built by like 30, 30 years old or, or older people. So people with expertise. It's, uh, it's not about idea, it's more about execution. Uh, so um, it's, it's okay if you work somewhere else before you start a startup. Or if you do a small business uh, before you start uh, a big international business. So for example, uh, first of all, um, uh, a few weeks ago, a girl, 16 years old, uh, reached out to me and said, I have $200. What can I do with it? I would like to, to build IT business. And I asked her, um, so um, can you code? And she said, yeah, I am a, I'm a coder. Uh, so then I told her that there is an opportunity to start, my, uh, to start IT business right now. And uh, I uh, extremely encourage you to, to Google this. And uh, I I've, uh, I've did a post um, on that. Uh, there is a concept, micro SaaS. Um, and uh, this is the business uh, which you can, you can build a business which will bring you $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 a month. And the cost of running this business is extremely low. So you can be a solo developer and run this business. And uh, if you do it properly, you can even spend like 15 hours a week on running this business. And it's not a big product. It's more like a small sub product. For example, you can do a plugin for a website, mm -hmm. some specific bot for Telegram, uh, some you know extension for big, uh, for, for big products like, I don't know, Mm, um, Salesforce or uh, HubSpot or Notion or others because they have marketplaces and you can do some specific add-ons. And the beauty of this business is that you don't uh, need to invent the wheel. You go to the mar uh, you go to the marketplaces, look at what are the solutions on the market, look for solutions which are you know you know uh, look, look for example for comments which are you know a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, users require some feature and just build this one feature. 
And oftentimes it could take you like 30 hours to develop a product and the rest you will be spending mostly on marketing the product. Mm. And you don't need to, to use extensive digital marketing on this marketing mix. This marketing will be also very cheap uh, because it could be a uh, labor intense because you will need to run a Reddit forum, answering questions and, uh, you know, spreading information in specific niche communities. Uh, but um, but it, uh, uh, this business is not that sophisticated. Mm. Uh, and uh, I believe yeah, a lot of young people in Uzbekistan could employ this strategy and get, get their f- first thousand dollars a month uh, on this business. And they can even start it while they're working on studying because you need like 10, 10 hours a week, for example, uh, 15 hours a week to start. And like they will bring you like $200, $300, $500 a month. And like on the course of a year, they could be uh, bring you a couple of thousand dollars a month. And uh, for example, I have a friend uh, who had a project like that. Uh, and uh, it brought him like two thousand dollars a month for four years. It's uh, you know uh, it's it's quite a good passive income, right? Yeah. Uh, for 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 a young person. Uh, and then and by by doing this business, you will acquire a lot of skills, um, uh, a, a lot of skills uh, which you need to run a big business, for example. Or you can work for for someone for for someone else for. Or you can run uh, an outsourcing company uh, developing software because a lot of startups are born uh, out of outsourcing. Yeah, they, they they do something for someone, they do it again, again and again, and then at some point, and they understand that uh, there could be a product here, and start uh, start business uh, product business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is typical scenario um, that people, after having a lot of experience on some product, they do their own product. So, you know, telling this, if 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 the one who wants to start the startup is a coder, is I understand that they can code something that right. And is there some based on your experience? Is there something to say you? can start your startup because you have this behavior, this attitude, these things like that. But you, no, you, you can't start startup because you have not that and that. Is it like, is, is there something like that? Uh, I, I believe uh, there are like different people say different uh, Based opinions. on your opinion, yeah. But what I believe people don't start, start a startup if they want just to earn money. Yeah. So, First, so idea. So, the, the from the beginning, target should not be money. Should not be money. So, what people want to to think about is to change the status quo, to impact. So, to, to the society. Maybe to a specific se- sector. So, they should be passionate about something, and they should be thinking that they they would want to change something. And uh, this is how you start. Mm. Then you look at uh, how scalable it could be. Because a lot of people, for example, in aerospace, they like are passionate about space, but they are not thinking as a businessman, uh, for example, uh, as businessman, to be, because they, they don't. To think it through about the business model, for example, how they earn money, how 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 much the customer acquisition costs them, and if it's the if it's sustainable. But uh, the first thing is that uh, you know you are specifically passionate about something, or and you like uh, working in some sector. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I strongly believe that in most of the sectors, d- thanks to you know technology push. A lot of things happening, business models are changing. You just need to understand uh, how your exact, how your sector is changing mm. and uh, f- try to find the, the best, the business model which uh, will work here. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, you also mentioned about the space. Uh, I know you are planning um, some hackathon in October um, with NASA. Can you tell us a bit, little bit about that? Why you come with this idea, and what is the story behind this? Uh, so uh, uh, this is a NASA space uh, space app challenge. 
as a as a regular event and uh, uh, I was to, a friend of mine in, in Armenia told me that there is a, a hackathon coming and I just uh, just uh, gave this idea to to, to, to my friend and uh, now Uzbek Cosmos is working on it and I, I'm helping out and um, the hackathon why, why I believe that it's important first of all it's uh, it's more about IT than building a rocket. Uh, and uh, it's an, an inspiration. Mm. This is a hackathon with uh, last, last year, 20, 28,000 people participated in it. And uh, I know that you know millions of people across the world are secretly passionate about space and thinking that like, maybe I can do something. And oftentimes they are scared. I can't do because I'm not a rocket scientist. But the good news is that you actually don't need to be uh, to do something. And um, uh, so I believe this hackathon is just an inspirational part, yeah. uh, participating in the global community, working on some global task. Um, it's about fun. It's about uh, finding, uh, finding people, like-minded people. Yeah, so this is why I believe that uh, we need to do this in, in Uzbekistan. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you, you, are, uh, uh, you, you live in a country of look back, right? So you have a long history in this. And um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So is it um, the NASA is the partner to, to make this to the to make this hackathon. This, how, is, how a, this is this is a NASA hackathon. So <laughs> they they partner with local communities like active people, volunteers, uh, to bring it in uh, each location, and uh, more than a hundred countries participate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have this lo uh, and uh, people from a hundred countries participate at this simultaneously. Okay, at the same time. At the same time. In October, it will be in hundred countries. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then they they have local uh, local uh, you know uh, pri prize winners, and uh, three up to three of them are nominated to the global challenge. Okay. So the winners, uh, there will be global winners, uh, which are selected by NASA. Uh, yeah, NASA Space Challenge, I would say they it's it's like sub organization of NASA. So to be precise, uh, yeah. But uh, it's it's about inspiration and driving the ideas. Yeah. What is the price uh, if if you know um, to the final stage into the I, finalists? Uh, I need to still need to double check okay. on that. Okay. But what I believe is that people will participate in it not because of the not price, because of the but price. because of uh, making something for space yeah. and fun. But yeah. because it's kind of own standing stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Dennis, you also told on one, one of your talk that finding investors is like getting married. Yeah. Um, many people try to attract investors in many ways, like uh, promoting their mm, product, making a good pitch, a lot of on internet, a lot of recommendation how to make pitch, how to make that and that. But I have a question that from investor point of view, how investors find startups? Mm -hmm. What is the way or method or the thing that you look for startups yourself, let's say? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also touch upon it in my lectures. Um, but first, uh, you know, I like to put, uh, uh, put you know, any concept in simple words. So uh, fundraising, is actually a B2B sales. So as with B2B, any B2B sales, there are very, various channels of acquiring leads, right? And, uh, you know, some specific pro process. But uh, you guys in um, Eurosoft, uh, you're, you're, you're doing B2B sales, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. So you know that warm interests are the best ways uh, to, to sell something to someone, right? Yes. So the same is with, um, uh, with uh, VCs. Because uh, if you think about it, you are selling a uh, share in your company to someone who didn't know you. Uh, you promise uh, this person that you will build a big business. There, are, there is a big chance that you won't. And that there are not that many reliable metrics they could uh, you know, rely on uh, when they, they make, VCs are making decisions. 
So it's all about trust and how they believe in what you're doing. And it's so, and uh, people would like to see you in dynamics, right? Yes. Uh, so, um, you know, warm intros is, is, you know, is something which works better in any B2B sales. Yeah, for example, just let's give you an example. We have Avlo Shop product mm -hmm. is a startup company. Um, let's say this product is is exist. We have now this product and it's on the market. We have about 500 customers and every day we are selling the product. It's a it's a constructor, kind of place, a kind of platform where non-technical people can create their internet uh, shop within few clicks. Mm -hmm. Like Shopify, mm -hmm. yeah. Like idea is similar, but there is um, tiny, tiny good, good features we add, which is not uh, in Shopify. Yeah, that as you mentioned, this micro SaaS uh, uh, solutions. So we have this product, but how do you find us? Mm -hmm. Or, or shall we try to find you? Or wh what is the way that you and me we meet somewhere? Mm -hmm. What is the best? The, be the, the best way, the best way for Avla Shop, and it, uh, it's actually how it uh, happened in your case. I just uh, knew a few people in Uzbekistan and asked, are there any good startups? And they said, you, you definitely need to talk to Avla. So this is uh, this is uh, how you make, uh, uh, make... So first, sorry, first stage is announcing your product to the society and also not to the society, but to the key people. Is so, it that so f first of all, you need to start your business, oh. not to have your real clients. Uh, then, uh, so sorry again. Before starting a business or before having real clients, is is it worse to talk to investment investors? In most cases, yes. Okay, it's worse. Less. So, because some investors invest on idea phase as well, no? Uh, Almost not. Yeah. <laughs> Almost yeah. not. Yeah. The, the, uh, at the idea stage, the only uh, money you can get is from your friends and family. Okay. Yeah. 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 In in many other cases, you just need to do something. And uh, the biggest problem uh, with IT guys and girls uh, is that they think, okay, I need to build so many features in the product before I can even shop it. But in reality, you need to start so from something very small and try to get the first money from your client. Doesn't matter what function you have, but you are getting money. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, and uh, by doing this, you will learn so much about uh, your uh, clients and uh, you will end up with totally different product. So the sooner you start to talk to the clients, especially when you develop something in IT, the faster you get uh, the product they, they need. Yeah. Because uh, if you have an idea, for a product right now, any product, um, it's totally wrong, definitely wrong. So it could be somehow initial uh, phase is initial, wrong. Is initial phase is wrong, but uh, the idea maybe is like the, the right direction. But uh, you know, the, that's a setup. What are the features? What would be the first and uh, which is coming next? Are wrong. You just start experimenting with real people uh, and uh, learning from them what what should be in it. For example. Uh, I, I'm actively looking at uh, various solutions in um, in the blockchain right now, and uh, uh, oftentimes they ch they just start from community. They don't have product. They say, "Hey, there is a media community. We're doing something," and uh, they learn. They are learning from from the community what are the problems, and then they 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 try to understand what's what's the product. Mm. And for example, uh, with my Ask VC. I, I did more than 60 lectures, uh -huh. but most of the lectures are actually the incoming requests from founders. And uh, this is, so I was not sitting and inventing what should be doing this. I, I just started doing something. I just started uh, talking to real people and they were asking, and then I used my expertise in VC uh, and uh, the feedback from startups to understand what would be like the next lecture. Or should I do a course? For example, I'm doing right now the course on fundraising mm -hmm. uh, or I have another course for venture capitals and business angels. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's a mix of what I do and what the market uh, needs. So what is the time frame that you develop first very, very tiny, tiny MVP? 
You need to like, let's say, if you spend six months, is it okay? No. So you know, MVP is could be very different from from the product from uh, different perspective. Yeah. So, for example, you would like to build, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. You would like to build uh, some Ethereum, for example. But it couldn't be the series. First of all, you can use uh, uh, something like you know Bubble to build it, mm-hmm. and it could be have like only two or three features. Mm-hmm. If you want to build um, a mobile app, for example, you can start from chatbot and Telegram. That's okay, and you can do it like overnight or like in a week or so. Uh, so think about how you can make uh, a test something some core value faster. And there is another aspect. Before you understand what exactly uh, your audience need, it will, it will take you some time talking to people, uh, acquiring exper- expertise, looking at uh, other uh, solutions on the market and extremely encourage you to less, to spend at least one month on that. It could easily take you six months when you uh, start, uh, you know, better explore what what's happening in the market, and um, and you can even start from some consulting work for someone. Mm. So uh, it's uh, you know a lot of people think that I need to start right now, or like uh, I will be late for the party. Yeah, you know? yeah. So market to, research is very important from the very beginning. This is actually why. I uh, in all my courses I have two mandatory lectures: total addressable market and competitor analysis. These are it takes time, but this these are the two stuff which you need uh, to start from the begin uh, from from the uh, from the very beginning. And you will be surprised how many people are not doing this and they fail because if you're doing this, you're acting as an as a businessman because businessmen first. Uh, you know, uh, make a research. While uh, if you're not doing it, you're just an amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and professional is always uh, always wins in the long run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <coughs> let's say you have idea, you make some product, something that is bringing you at least some money, small mm-hmm. money, tiny money. And is it the stage that I need to look for investors? Uh, you can get some money from business angels. So, for example, from this stage, at this stage, yeah, yeah. yeah. And How we call this stage? The first stage, uh, pre-seed. It's actually it, after family and friends stage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first stage, like at least to make small product, I need some money from my uh, father. Not necessarily. Like it, maybe I need like hundred dollar, couple hundred dollars. No, from my country hundred dollars is actually a pre-seed stage. So still, yeah. What is the first stage? It's called in terminology. Is it? FNF, right? Yeah. Family and friends. After that, pre-seed stage. Yeah, from professional and business angels. Yes, from professional business angels um, stage, the product is somehow ready. Something is there with some income from yeah. the product, right? Then we need to talk to business angels. Yeah. So here is a moment that in your practice, right? How I, I have a product. How I find business angels? Is it like talking to you on writing you directly or talking to the going to the some accelerator programs? What is the best way to reach them? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, first of all, um, you can reach business angels uh, from your f- from your country. It's highly unlikely if you didn't study abroad, for example, it's highly unlikely that you can get uh, business angels from other country. Uh, maximum you can get is uh, getting uh, business angels from you know uh, the Central Asia region, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, maybe Azerbaijan. But business angels is often times like also about you know you knowing people and uh, who who could be business angels? It could be professional business angels, and they are uh, you know. They are claiming boldly that they are business angels. They are doing investments, uh, you know, constantly. And they market themselves. They write articles. And there are very few uh, in Uzbekistan, but there are still some people like that. And uh, they oftentimes they participate in you know pitch competitions or in um, 
uh, you can write them directly, or you can uh, or can, uh, you can approach them through the portfolio companies. They invested in some companies, so you can approach to to them, or you can just talk to other you know startups. Uh, you know who who raised funding? Maybe they okay. How they did and the journey? Yeah, 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 no, no. Uh, spe- uh, ask for an introduction to a specific p- person. Okay. Yeah. Um, then you can go. Uh, of course, uh, you can go through some incubation and pre-acceleration program because they they need you know at least some people. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's not mandatory mm-hmm. actually. Uh, the other uh, business angel, uh, you know, the, 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 the other la- layer of business angels is actually if you're doing a bit of business, for example, and um, mm, one of your first clients, uh, maybe like your manager or the, fa- the, the, the owner of the business, if they see the potential in, in what you're doing, See the synergy, their experts, they could become your first business angels. Mm. So I would say so. Uh, actually, uh, it doesn't mean that you necessarily need a business angel. Some startups can bootstrap through the stage as well without funding from business angels. But if you want to raise money, big money, um, and uh, in this uh, in this case, you need to raise them outside of uh, Uzbekistan, even like raise, for example, $2 million dollars, you need to raise from international yes. VCs. Not that many uh, professional VCs who would could invest uh, in, in round like that. You already at this stage, you already need international revenue. And you know, the more international revenue you have, the better. Yeah. And, uh, and like, uh, if you want to raise the round, you need at least six months. So you need to plan it. Not not saying okay, I need the uh, money next month. Okay, it's not wh- how it works. It takes time, at least six months, and uh, it means that um, you need to build relationships uh, with um, with those VCs uh, who could uh, uh, who could potentially invest and uh, look at uh, you know and uh, at a VC from another country, for example, in Singapore, they have no idea what is what is Uzbekistan. You, for example, you don't know what's happening in Uganda, right? So if someone comes to you and say, hey, give me a million dollar to Uganda. No one gives. No one gives. Yeah. Just, just, just don't have a clue. Yeah. So uh, this is why um, at these stages, oftentimes from, uh, top accelerators are, are handy, like Y Combinator, Berkeley Skydeck, uh, Techstars, 500 startups. So you, you're, you, 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 you apply there. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, uh, you get like a stamp like approved by this accelerator yeah. and uh, they are kind of expanding your uh, potent- the, the, network. The, 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 the network of the investors you can reach out because they, they have demo day but <clears throat> uh, getting accepted to the accelerator is not the, in the, the end of the journey it's just the beginning when you're accepted uh, you need to work really hard to make revenue traction mm. because uh, through the next three months or six months, how I don't know, depending on how long it takes and uh, the acceleration program takes, you say, we were here, now we're here. Look at the graph of our revenue uh, and our achievement. And this is what uh, makes, uh, you know, draw, 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 draw the attention to your startup. Yeah. Let's give the example, as I said, this uh, Avlo.shop is a startup project we have. <clears throat> Uh, after friends and family stage, we are, let's say, looking for angel investors. But here is a good kind of point that I am a startup. I have a one, I'm a one person. I don't have yet investment. I don't have money yet, right? I build my product. It is somehow bringing money, but it is not even break even point, right? Yeah. It is not even that. So I need to work on startup investments, uh, accelerators, pitch preparation, talking and meeting. But there is operation. At the same time, this product should be grow. <laughs> product should be sell to be to mm-hmm. B2B or to the customers, right? What is the best practice? You need to then in, at this stage you need to find operation manager who will take care mm-hmm. of the product. Then you go to them. Or what is the the, the thing? Uh, welcome to my world. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, big money comes at a cost. Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> so you're totally right. Uh, at the ver- uh, very early stages, it's a, it's, a, it's a nightmare because you both need to run business and need to do this fundraising. 
And uh, the process is, uh, you know, fundamentally flawed. And I hope it will have will change somehow. But yes, um, when you do fundraising, you know, your business suffers. You don't have resources to hire, you know, CEO. You don't have resources to hire like investment relationship manager. It's too pricey for you. So what do you do then? Huh? What, what do you do in this situation? Is you sleep l- l- less? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you are only one soldier then, still, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. And this is uh, this is why uh, you need to prioritize what you do. So a lot of startups have the idea and go then go and spend money or spend time talking to to VCs. What I say, look, what are the criteria they need? Like you're not here. Don't waste months to to, to, talk, talking to the investors. Then what I say, you know, uh, it's an extremely low conversion of making, you know, persuading someone to make investment. But you can increase this conversion by addressing um, uh, those people who have the higher chance to invest. So one of the biggest mistakes startups have is like they go to VCs while uh, VCs won't give them money, for example, at this stage. Mm. So they waste, uh, they do like dozens of meetings, which are useless mm. because uh, they will uh, be like, they will be reasonable to talk to those people two years from now. Mm. So first of all, don't waste time uh, on people who are not relevant for you at the moment. So at the first meeting, I should ask them, what is your criteria, right? Uh, you, f- I'll give like, uh, n- not the criteria, uh, but a lot of VCs, they actually write on their websites. So we're Condition. investing series A, series B, series C's, and they are coming gam- and saying, okay, give me a hundred dollars, thousand dollars. Just, just don't waste money yeah. or time on that. Yeah. And actually, you don't actually even get the, get this meeting. Yeah. Because, um, because they, they, like, they will see. Okay. So what happens uh, in my case? Someone reaches out to me uh, in LinkedIn and uh, writes, "I would you care to invest? Okay. Tell me about the product. Okay. They tell. And then." Tell me about your revenue. Oh, uh, web revenue. Yeah. So what's the use of uh, mm. ri- writing to me? Or, you know, we're in Africa, for example, yeah. and doing business in Africa. Yeah. I don't invest in Africa. Yeah. So first of all, focus on those people, uh, those organizations who are, have a better chance of investing. Mm. In. And there is a reason why investors do that, because they have m- uh, investment mandates. And I have this in my lecture, because we have obligations for our LPs uh, and we have our focus. So the closer you are to the focus, the higher chance that um, you close the deal. Mm. So you should be in the focus of the, uh, of the investor in terms of the geography, stage, technology stack, right? Uh, and um, so prioritize. And, uh, uh, and uh, the same is with accelerators and with pitch sessions, with, with everything. Uh, you as a businessman, uh, you need uh, to ask yourself, so what is the goal of you know, participating in, a, in an event uh, or traveling somewhere and how this uh, contributes to my business? Mm-hmm. Do, does it bring uh, revenue? Does it bring you know, investors? Does it bring something? So, uh, because a lot of people uh, spend, you know, spend a lot of time to get a publication, for example, at TechCrunch. Mm. But it's actually useless. That, yeah, yeah. Actually useless at, uh, at those <clears throat> stages. For example, if you're raising, like, if, if you didn't raise like $10 million, it's actually useless. You need to target uh, uh, target uh, investors other ways. Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting that startup, <clears throat> you know, at the same time I have seen uh, while we were um, making a due diligence with one of the investor uh, to our product, uh, Avlo Shop. I mean that there is many, many calculations and finance and this. Of course, we have a finance uh, director who is doing this. Is all, but as a normal startup guy who knows coding, yeah, I need to know how to 
talk to them, how to pitch to them, how to make these nice tables and and PPT this, you know, at the same time, you need to code, right? So is it startup the the man who or or lady girl or boy should who want to start startup should be kind of super duper um, the knowledgeful or uh, how is, how is? first of all uh, this is the reason you typically have at least two founders right yes the first one is writing code the other one is talking to those uh, so then now e- yes thank you to this podcast so so it comes now kind of recommendation that don't start alone. Is it like that? Uh, or how, how you... There are some some people which are better off alone. And those people are typically uh, more entrepreneurial rather exactly. than, uh, than tech people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not mandatory that you specifically have the founder, co-founder, uh, but it's extremely recommended because, uh, you know... Oh, these things, yeah. Because of these things, uh, you have so many things you need to do and uh, you need uh, someone to be aligned with you. Yeah. So, and you, like the, the classical combination is uh, CEO and CTO, mm-hmm. the two people. CEO is dealing with uh, fundraising, with uh, sales and marketing. CTO is doing everything that it works uh, perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it works. Mm-hmm. First it works, then it works perfectly, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, yes, you need to, uh, and when you start a business, you don't have answers to all the questions. Yes. And you, you, you should be okay with yes. it. But what you need is uh, you need to learn and you need to understand what you don't know and where to acquire something. Because uh, the other, you know, the, the, on the other spectrum, people think, okay, I'm, I don't know enough to start business. And uh, in some, if you're a student, then you probably write. But if you, for example, have ten year experience in um, you know working somewhere, um, that then you know it shouldn't be stopping you, mm. but because you you can say okay I'll have a six months course on uh, marketing, then I'll have six months course on digital uh, you know product management and and other and other and other. Uh, the re- the reality is that you just need people with expertise yes. doing this in yes. your team. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you need to s- to know something, but uh, I, I like this, um, that uh, uh, if you are a manager, you are the stupidest uh, person in the room because <laughs> in your team, you have experts who know in something better than you yeah. and doing it better yeah. than you, but you need to manage them. Yes. So you, you, you need to understand something. You need to understand that uh, you don't have all the answers and you will find them somehow. Uh, yeah, and uh, this fundraising stuff actually is actually, um, it's not the hardest thing uh, in your life. And you say, okay, I, I need to build a f- financial model. I have a video lecture, like two, 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 two hour video lecture, like it shows how to do it in details, mm. it's not a sophisticated mm. stuff. No. And uh, the, the, you know, at pre-seed stages and seed stages, those financial models are not that sophisticated. At the end, at Series A, you will have a financial uh, CFO who will be doing it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the, this cap table, exactly the same yeah. and all, all, all that stuff. Yeah. So we were in a pre-seed level, like now product is ready, something is coming, we had a good pitch, investor is there. Now we are showing the product. And there, what is, for your case, yes, with your practice, what is the main point that you say, yes, I give you 100K investment and on a preset level, let's say, or you say, no, sorry, I don't give you. What is the main thing that you you care in that uh, moment? In that moment, you actually, uh, do you really believe that this small team will b- build a big business? Okay. So, so this is a big question to you in that case. Yeah, yeah the biggest question, the, the earlier the stage of the startup, uh, the less reference points you have. So uh, you, you have people who say, okay, we will build business in Indonesia or in Turkey or somewhere. Do they? Will they? You don't know. It's it's uh, at this stage raising like first uh, several thousand, do- hundred thousand dollars. It's more like a leap of faith. Uh, and uh, 
uh, and b- 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 if we talk about Avlo shops, so I, I said to the guys, so address the big market mm. from f- from this from the state, beginning from the beginning because the local market uh, for this product is really small and it's you know needs educate the market needs education and some of uh, companies are doing this education of building the e-commerce uh, so try to make traction the sooner the better at some other market uh, I don't know. I don't know, just pick pick one big market. And the faster you get this traction, uh, the more chances that you raise the next round from those VCs from this country where you're making traction in. So let's say you you got your answer to to your question that yes, they can do it, right? Let's say. Mm -hmm. Then you are ready to give 100K, let's say. And I'm saying as an example. And then after due diligence, et cetera, et cetera, you pay and... Then let's say Presid is closed. We we close the Presid. We are working with that resource we have, right? In that moment, we are receiving first Presid resource. What is the main uh, focus should be to spend? Is it to marketing? Is it to product development even to the next level? Or reaching to um, next market? What that Presid resource or finance should be spent? Uh, first of all, uh, it should be spent on increasing your revenue okay. on the, some big market. Uh, and you need to reach uh, to specific, uh, you know, levels. For example, if you're doing, uh, you know, for example, the next round would be like a million to $2 million. So you need to at least reach $20,000 in monthly recurring revenue for SaaS businesses. It's better, like if it would be thirty to fifty thousand dollars months per month, and uh, whatever resources uh, which are relevant to to, to get to this uh, to the to this goal, these are the best uh, in your prioritization. And oftentimes, uh, you need to deprior- to deprioritize a lot of uh, features in your product. Because, for example, I have, uh, for example, there, there, there was a company and uh, uh, they were raising $2 million, two, two and a half to be precise. So they participated in the US Accelerator, 500 startups. Pre-seed? Uh, Is it pre-seed level? No, it's, uh, they, they were doing uh, US seed round. Okay. So, uh, so uh, they were doing like uh, ha- half a million dollars in annual revenue back then. And they uh, they were doing some IT solution for construction in the United States, and uh, mm, uh, their product should be using artificial intelligence, so computer vision and all stuff. But even at this stage, they were doing a lot of manual work. So what what essentially they were doing for their clients? Their clients uploaded the images, and they used the uh, people to you know to map them overnight hmm. and deliver the value and uh, i even have a video on my channel that the best mvp for uh, a minimum viable product for uh, for ml startup is actually people doing the, the, the doing it and so stuff. in fact there was not artificial intelligence no hmm. even at this stage so uh, a lot of things uh, could be done, uh, you know, in the, in your product uh, could be done mani- manually, mm. or uh, could be lacking. Mm. But this should be sufficient for the client to be to be ready to pay for it. Yeah. And later on, you add uh, functionality. So this is the biggest uh, mistake tech people do. So they say, and actually, we we, we did startups ourselves. So I was twenty six. We were doing a startup. So one of the biggest mistake we, we did is that, you know, our product is not that ready to show them to the client. Yeah. Yeah. So this company who got two, two and a half million in seed level got that money for this? Yeah. Then, then, then they raised five to t- oh, ten million dollars. So they, ah. they, they, they're, uh, they're doing their progress and expanding their business. Yeah. Ah, excellent. So while talking this journey we are still in a journey yeah after press seed we are okay we spend then seed level comes right mm-hmm. and at that stage 
um, we need another investment, mm -hmm. right? And still, we are talking to business angels, the no, same no, level it, people, or no, is no, different. No, no, no. This is this is already where you talk to venture early stage venture capitals, uh, and uh, most so business angels. We don't. We are not saying they are ventures. They are not ventures, actually, right? They are just business angels. Business angels is just uh, you know single person doing decision making decisions. While okay. venture capital is uh, is a corporate is a, is a corporations a sort of corporations. So typically, a small group of people, maybe five people, maybe ten people, uh, but they are doing it professionally, and they typically manage uh, so, uh, you know other uh, money of other people. Okay. Not 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 their own. Okay. So the same question comes to you. We are in a pitch to the uh, at the seed level to the venture capital. The question is the same again from investor. Uh, yes. The first question they ask. The same. Ask, uh, 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 the, 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 the first of all, they look if those people could scale this business, if they believe uh, that there is a big market and it will be growing faster. Uh, but they are, they are, they they ask more questions now. They ask more questions about your unit economics, uh, about your uh, month over month revenue growth, about uh, your client base. So they have some artifacts of businesses uh, which they can extrapolate on. So this this ugly tables comes at that point. Uh, you actually have the business. You need to have a financial model the, the, from the, the beginning. From the beginning. And uh, um, uh, and for example, uh, I, I mentioned to you that we have invested in a company Electronique. Yeah, it, uh, it's the company uh, which was uh, uh, founded by a guy from uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, they raised more than twenty million dollars now, uh, participated in Y Combinator, uh, and uh, now develop the business uh, in uh, three countries: in the United States, in Latin America, and in India. And uh, <clears throat> I remember their first financial model when they were proceed. So it was like uh, it was very very simple. It was uh, showing the plan for the next twelve or eighteen months, and um, it was you know it wasn't reliable. But it, at least it showed some something. It showed how we will spend this uh, first four hundred thousand dollars they were or five hundred thousand dollars they were they were raising, and uh, it, it showed uh, you know what was the vision uh, till the end of the year where we'll be in terms of revenue, in terms of costs, in terms of headcount, something. It's not that the not sophisticated model with like balance sheet and cash flow and P and L. No, it's it's typically a cash flow. It's typically sh it typically shows uh, what are the yeah. you know uh, income and uh, and uh, what is the revenue, what are, what are the costs, and what is uh, you know what's missing, or how much funding do you have, and uh, it's just uh, you know you you put reasonable assumptions. Uh, on the number of clients, uh, the 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 tickets, uh, you know the reasonable sales cycle, uh, the reasonable cost of acquisition of clients, and uh, and then you show here's how I I, I look at my business. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, you need to understand that it would it wouldn't be okay, accurate. The earlier the stage, the simpler the model. And less, the less occurred. Yeah, yeah. And professional investors and business angels they understand it. Yeah. But uh, but and uh, you know the later the stage of the company, the more reliable the business models, and the more questions comes to this uh, financial model. If, if you're doing Series A's or Series B's, when you raise ten million dollars, twenty million dollars, uh, a lot of questions and you know decision making is uh, moving towards. Um, you know how how rely how sustainable and profitable the business could be, yeah. While uh, at the early stages and pre seed and seed, uh, it's more about people which are doing this business. On the level of seed, we are talking about average million dollar investment, right? In yeah. the level of seed, yeah, it could be million, it could be two million. It depends Plus on. Minus. It could be. It depends on the the country you're operating in. Okay. So if it's United States, uh, two million dollars is a typical seat. Okay. In, in it, Central Asia, I believe uh, closer to to a million dollar. Okay. And after seat, then Series A start, right? Mm -hmm. In Series A, we are talking about ten million. 
Uh, it least. could be five, uh, it could be 10 million. So five Depen plus, yeah? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And uh, you need to understand uh, how the company looks at this stage. Mm. So if it's a Series A, for example, for SaaS business, so they have uh, $100,000 in monthly recurring revenue and maybe $150,000 in monthly revenue. It's a team of 20, 30 people. Mm. Uh, it's growing like 2x at least a year. Mm. They are operating uh, on on another market, um, big market, for example, in Indonesia or in the US or in Brazil, uh, and these uh, and they have uh, very important uh, when you raise money that you are not running out of funding. Mm. So you need to have uh, you need to have um, a buffer at least six months. Okay. So then it, you, you 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 plan fundraising. Yeah, yeah. That you, that you have a f six month buffer. Then you start. Okay, thinking next series or something like not, that. Not not thinking. Uh, you, you, you start. You start uh, talking to VCs. Okay. Because it takes time. Not only in Uzbekistan, in the United States and uh, in Europe, everywhere. Mm. Uh, I, I in one of my lectures I show the statistics of DocSigned. Eleven weeks for closing the round. Hmm. So at least, uh, at least uh, this time. Which round it was? Series A or? It was seed. Seed. Uh, but the long, the, the bigger the round, the longer it takes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you need, uh, for example, if you close Series A, you do due diligence. You hire outsourcing companies to do financial and legal due diligence. You pay like, like. Fifty thousand dollars, for example, for, yeah. for this for drafting documents yeah. and uh, checking uh, that you need to prepare like. I, I, I was uh, looking at, I was participating in some of them. So there were like 70 documents in it. And uh, seed level. It's, uh, it was seed, uh, but it's closer to series eight. Uh, so you, you needed the proper data room, a lot of, uh, you know, legal documents, a lot of uh, uh, financial and other documents. And I actually have a video, this guys from Electronic uh, um, uh, record the, the video on how to do a pitch deck. Oh, no, sorry, uh, data room. So how it looks for, for Series A's. Yeah. Yeah, th th there is a lot of stuff in it. But fortunately, uh, at this stage, you typically already have a person dedicated to yeah, this. Yeah, to that, yeah. Yeah. So typically Series A, Series B, Series C, and then? They, if you can have Series H and others. It so, goes like that. Yeah, but the, 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 those rounds, uh, series, like starting from Series B and uh, uh, on, it's more like a private equity. Mm. So you have a big team, like 50, 100 uh, people, like uh, maybe uh, 200 people. Uh, you have uh, departments in your company, you have a specially dedicated person for investment relationship, which are, you know, uh, writing documents, contacting with VCs. Actually, at this stage, VCs are contacting to you because there are not that many targets. Um, and, uh, you know, you're acting like a corporation. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So going to the IPO, right, mm -hmm. um, being uh, to be public company, is it this way? This is a roadmap should be done, or even after a seed level, you can apply to be I, uh, on IPO. Public uh, there are there are no, no rules for that. Um, uh, but first, uh, first of all, only maybe like only a handful of companies do IPOs. Most of uh, uh, most of uh, startups, successful startups, are got acquired, mm. like more than ninety percent from big companies. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. And uh, you you are you're doing IPO if you are really successful, mm. and uh, you are becoming so big that no one can acquire you. Okay, so it's your decision to to be to go to IPO or to be sold. Uh, you know, uh, exit is a, is more like an art rather than like a, yeah. a, a full-blooded decision because uh, as, as soon as you run business, you you know, at some points you uh, got approached by car companies, uh, you know, big players on the market, which are saying we are looking for a target to make a merger and expand uh, tap into the market. And you need to, you, you need to, to make the tough decisions. Either I sell my company or I'll I'll uh, continue doing it solo. Uh, and uh, for example, 
I I I, I, wrote, I, I read a story of uh, Facebook, and at some point, um, uh, Facebook uh, there, there was a, you know the, the, uh, I don't remember the name of the company, but uh, they 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 had an, like they were uh, advised to be acquired, but uh, Mark r- refused this, mm-hmm. and he was right. And there is no right and wrong yes. decision. Yes. Should I uh, sell the company? If you you feel so, sell. Yeah. Should I continue solo? If you see feel so, this is also okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But company even can be sold totally on even seed level, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it depends on the. Uh, case. It, it depends on the case, uh, but uh, the earlier you sell your company, the 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 lower the. Um, the, the the lower the returns to your to, to VCs and to, to, to you and uh, when your company is acquired you uh, you have obligations like to work at least a couple of years for 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 the company mm. before which acquired you mm. uh, yeah it, in mo- in most of the cases there are ex- exclusions but typically this is uh, this is the way so they they um, they acquire you they onboard you. And uh, there is even equi-hire concept when uh, companies are acquired uh, because of the people, not the product. Mm. These are typically small uh, acquisitions like for several million dollars, for example, uh, and they are happening at the very early early stages. And um, for equi-hires, typically the reason is that VCs invest in money or business angels. Uh, You tried. Uh, you as a businessman understood that uh, maybe I can't build the big business out of it yeah. for, 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 for numerous yeah. reasons. And the best way is to sell it. So yeah. um, VCs are getting at least some money and you continue to develop your product uh, or working on the, on the idea as a part of the bigger company. And okay. uh, it's, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they 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 mm, hire your employees and they work so kind of vc will develop product on their own in that case no right? VC, VC don't uh, vc don't uh, develop the, the product on their own no, no i mean the, on b- equi hire on equi hire the bigger company for example in your space uh, is coming and saying oh we have always dreamed of uh, doing an nlp solution for our crm for example and there is a team of tw- uh, 12 uh, to 12 people doing some nlp solution for something so quite smart smart people can do something let's let's uh, let's buy them for 5 million dollars for example and they will become our r and d department uh, for nlp mm. for example mm. so, so stuff like that mm. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I hope our conversation is uh, is being very helpful to our society. Um, dostlar, agar suhbatimiz yoqayotgan bo'lsa, albatta like tugmamizni bosish, uh, yoqmayotgan bo'lsa bemalol dislike va kanalimizga obuna bo'lishni unutmang. Um, I have a one question that I would like to ask regarding the um changes in 2022 especially after covid uh, post covid situations and um a lot of companies are coming to a lot of it companies are coming to uzbekistan and opening their offices a lot of it expats uh, are also coming how how do you honestly see um this effect in 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 our it market Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, the first thing I like is that you have uh, big international companies like IPAM working, and uh, as far as uh, I remember, a few more peop- uh, companies are coming uh, because uh, those are the companies which are uh, working with international clients, and uh, uh, they actually uh, bring expertise. So those uh, developers which are working in these companies, they will uh, par- some of them. So not only developers, but product managers, you don't have them most, like very few of uh, senior product managers are in Uzbekistan, but they are necessary to build good IT businesses, uh, project managers and others. So uh, first, uh, big uh, IT companies which are coming here and uh, set up an office and uh, hiring people which are working for international uh, pr- projects, 
this is a big contribution to the ecosystem because later on those uh, those people uh, out of those companies will start their IT businesses. It's uh, it's inevitable, and uh, they will also those big companies they will educate more people here. Um, the other uh, the other direction is that uh, more maybe startups or uh, people uh, I, 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 with IT expertise are coming. Some of them are uh, freelancers, other of them are just uh, like uh, looking for the other in- endeavors. And um, the good part is that uh, they worked at big companies, for example, Yandex or Mailru or, 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 or others, and uh, they worked at huge projects, uh, have expertise working on, on, on this. And uh, uh, if you can onboard them for your startups or for your local companies, they can bring, uh, at this point, they can bring expertise, which is lacking at the moment. Five years from now, you will be having uh, your own uh, professionals, which will grow. Uh, but uh, now a lot of expertise is missing and you can embrace it uh, from those people. And if you, uh, I'll give you a story. A lot of uh, people relocate now to Armenia and we have a portfolio company, Wirestock, so they hired a, a backend developer from Yandex. They're very happy because this is the guy who worked on uh, very sophisticated problems, and he solves uh, he solves the problems uh, which they they could, didn't know how to solve. Mm. So at this moment, uh, embrace it. Uh, try to, ben- to try to pre- benefit it uh, and. I really encourage you if you do some parties, like informal meetings or something, uh, you know, socializing with expats because they're a little bit lonely, (laughs) (laughs) to be honest. (laughs) And they they need to do something and uh, you have good plof and others. So uh, uh, take a chance. uh, So maybe you can get a good employee uh, or co-founder. And... uh, I also see some startups already doing it and um, people, for example, who are project managers or you know, product managers in some companies, in, uh, in some big companies, they already become co-founders or you know, employees in startups. And uh, this, this gives them a push. Yeah, uh, yeah. excellent, so, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Dennis, we have uh, in our podcast, um, we try to attract um, more users. For example, ho- uh, the guest um, will offer some some special offer. Uh, some some guest give a book as a gift for best comment, best review, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah, I have idea that we will leave kind of kind of survey under the video. Mm-hmm. on our podcast uh, with questions um, if if someone is startup yeah with idea or some product on MVP stage or any stage let's say that they will explain their product what is and how it's helpful to the market or society or whatever what what problem their product is solving right mm-hmm. and based on that we will select maybe top Mm, two three users D- don't you mind to meet them face to face to to at least give them advice as a bonus from our from our podcast uh, i'd suggest more to to make uh, an online call because okay. people could be outside in, of, in even the regions y- yes yeah, yeah yeah so and I, 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 I'm, I'm you know that would be perfect yeah, yeah so let's uh, let's do that we uh, can do uh, it. i can grant like uh, half an hour to each of the teams so we have three teams like uh, an hour and a half yeah, so perfect. Uh, perfect. Yeah, let's so, do that. So then we will announce these uh, things. I, I will tell them uh, in Uzbek. Um, this is very important. Dostlar, har doim gidak bizda yana bonus vaqti sizda imkoniyat bor. Hozir mana mehmonimiz bilan kelishdik. Agar sizda startup g'oya bo'lsa, startup fikrlaringiz qilayotgan balki bir produktingiz bordir. Balki bozorga chiqqandir, balki investor qadriga qidirayotgandir siz. Mana qarshimizda o'sha uh, I2BF uh, Global Venture uh, investitsiya direktori o'tiribdilar va bular bilan kelishdik. Eng mana shu o'zingiz fikrlaringizni uh, videomiz ostida qoldirilgan linkda biz uh, survey beramiz. O'sha yerda so'ralgan savollarga javob bering. Mana shu berilgan javoblardan uchtasini, eng top uchta startup uh, vakilini 
Biz Deniz Kalishkin bilan yarım saatlik online sohbetke taklif kılamız. That's great that uh, they will have a face to face direct chance to talk to you to show their product maybe mm-hmm. to get some advices etc that it is kind of logical um continue of our talking today yeah mm-hmm. <clears throat> then is uh, before we we um, finish our conversation uh, first of all the the many many things that you have uh, time to talk to us here to give your thoughts about this um that will be helpful to the young generation to the society to all people who are trying to who are who are trying to solve these old problems that we have uh, talked today yeah do you have anything um as a last comment from your heart to give them recommendation or to give advice uh, one of the company who you invest uh, got unicorn can you Tell us little about that company. What is the company, and on which sta- state you stage you invested? Yeah, uh, this is uh, the company called Service Titan. Uh, so it's a U.S. company um, founded by an Armenian who had experience, uh, who actually lived in in the United States, and uh, they are doing CRM and field service management for plumbers, electricians, and other utility workers. So it's a simple uh, simple solution which uh, you know helps uh, navigate to the next order, as, uh, do a signature payments, uh, show the catalogs of products and services, and all that stuff. So it's sort of one all-in-one solution for a specific sector. Mm. And we invested uh, at uh, seed stage. So we were among the first institutional investors. And uh, why we invested is actually because we knew people personally uh, at this stage. And then later on, they raised more and more money. And at some point, uh, they opened an office, uh, R&D office in uh, in Armenia, in Yerevan. It wasn't uh, at the very beginning, but uh, founders felt uh, felt important uh, to have uh, an R&D office here. And uh, it's now almost 300 people working here. Mm yeah uh, and uh, and many more startups uh sport out of uh, you know spin, uh, had spin-offs out of uh, this company for example another company shop monkey they were also in the out of the, the sphere of uh, you know our Armenian community and we funded them and they raised 20 million dollars or something mm. already so this unicorn company uh, got unicorn after how many months or year after yeah. you invest Oh, it take maybe five years. Or five something. years. So yeah, they got, it's, they got it's a journey. So typically, it takes maybe seven seven years to become a unicorn. So it, it takes time. Mm. It's, it's not fast. Excellent. So, uh, my friends, the Dennis company who invested to the one company, and after five seven years, they become unicorn. You know, unicorn is is a uh, ev- evaluating company with at least one billion dollar so it is great that the fantastic job your you and your team made uh, to, to this more, company more my team ra- rather than me personally yeah i yeah. mean as is one team is is, yeah. is, is uh, in general yeah uh this is uh, extremely important both uh, for uh, for uh, citizens of uzbekistan and uh, policy makers uh, because uh, all the podcast I was, uh, you know, promoting uh, people doing international business, but I I, I want <coughs> that there was uh, there would be a contribution to your local country, and uh, I want to stress here that doing international business you contribute to your uh, local community first. Uh, if you are doing international business, you you get in like more revenue, and you actually bringing revenue and money into your country then uh having r d office here or like uh, our back office here uh, you paying people uh salaries and they spend those uh, you know very good salaries here then you 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 teach people international experience and you build a community it community so you grow an expertise in your country so there is an uh, there is no like uh, conflict of interests 
uh, that you're doing international business out of Uzbekistan. It's a, it's actually the way to develop an, an ecosystem. So I encourage more people to do that because I see that uh, you Uzbeks, you're, uh, you know, um, uh, at least with all the people I talked, uh, each of them would like to do at least something to contribute to their community. It's important uh, because of the families, because of uh, the country. So people want to do that. And uh, I would to specifically stress that by doing international business, you contribute into to the local communities. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Dennis, do you, based on this comment, I'm just thinking, do you uh, invest on pre-seed level startups or not? No, unfortunately, we don't invest at pre-seed level. On which level? level? Seed level? On? Seed level, and uh, in our case, we invest in companies which are doing business in the United States. Ah, okay. So this is why I'm, I'm staying in Uzbekistan. I'm more focused on giving lectures or... Uh, or uh, Coaching. Uh, coaching, yeah, at this stage. Okay. So I want uh, that uh, more startups would uh, increase their successes on the international arena and maybe some of them would be uh, would be a good uh, target for investments uh, for i2bf but it's um, it's not it's it's not actually my final goal i'm okay. not doing it uh, because of the business reasons i'm doing it because of my personal reasons okay got it got it so yeah thank you very much for coming today and i'm very happy again to meet you to talk to you here And a quick announcement I will take to audience. Dostlar, mana bugun juda ham kuchli mutaxassis, xalqaro tajribaga ega investor, I2BF Global Venture kompaniyasi investitsiya direktori Denis Kalishkin bilan suhbatlashyapmiz.